to day two, Bible Marathon, so that we just pick up from where we left yesterday. We are grateful to God for what he has done for us and what he's continuing to do. And we know that God is speaking to our lives. Someone say amen. One more time, say amen. We give glory to God. Just a, a, a little recap for yesterday. We stopped yesterday at a place where we said, let us have self-examination, self-test. And I want to believe that all of us, when we went home, if you were here yesterday, you went and you did your self-examination. I remember Pastor Ken saying, if you need to do an ultrasound, an MRI, a scan over your heart. And the reason we were doing self-examination and self-test was so that we can find whether we are still in faith. And I want to believe that you did your self-examination well. I may not know what you found out about your relationship with God. I may not know where you are, but at least you are aware of where you are in God. But one thing I want to say tonight is that, dear friends, it is the little foxes that spoil the vine. It is just the little foxes. Sometimes you may have examined your life and you may not have seen those big things that we talk about. But I want you to know that the small foxes spoil the vine. The bitterness will spoil your heart, will cause you to miss the blessings that God has for you. Bitterness will cause you to become sick. And in this year of restoration, you'll be looking for someone to lay hands on you so that you can receive your healing. And yet, if you only released that bitterness, you will have received your healing. Someone say amen. So you would be praying, God, restore my health. And we thank God that you've been praying like that. But one thing we want to encourage you tonight is that you just have to let go and let God. Amen? Maybe, maybe it may be little things that just uh, hide within our hearts, something to do with anger, something to do with unforgiveness, something to do with malice, gossip. And it's such a thing that we don't really consider to be big things. But we just need to get to a place whereby we can let go and let God. And everything about our lives will be great. Maybe it may not be such things as you examined yourself. Maybe they are just people that you are holding on in a relationship that you need to let go. But because of how beneficial they are to you, or because of what you get out of them, you find it so difficult to let them go. But you find they're the ones that mislead your life. They're the ones that cause and cause you to, to uh, cause your relationship with God to be affected. And God is still calling unto us. And the big reminder is sin, is sin is dangerous. And if we keep hiding sin in our lives, it will mess our lives. Therefore, dear friends, let's deny ourselves what we've been holding on and stop living a life of compromising. Stop living a life of the, 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 causing yourself to look like you are okay and when you are not okay. Because God is calling us into a life of restoration. And this year, your restoration depends on your relationship with God. And God is more than willing to do that which he has declared because the word has already been declared you only need to do what you need to do to get what has been declared and you will rejoice in the Lord and God will restore you one more time amen blessed be the name of Jesus so we after having talked about this we finish by saying our God is a merciful God Despite the fact that we may face judgment or we may face the consequences of our sins. But we say God is merciful. And that is why I want to say to every one of us, there is hope for restoration. Tell your neighbor there is hope for restoration. One more time, tell your neighbor there is hope for restoration. Every one of us, you are able to experience restoration in your life because there is hope. For restoration and because of that I, I would still say after self-examination I know you do not have just to sit back as if there is nothing you can do 
Friends, there is a lot that you can do. You don't have just to sit back and feel like now this situation has come upon my life. I don't know what I should do about it. I want you to know you have something that you can do about your situation. Why am I saying so? Because God punishes us when we sin and interrupt our relationship with him. But he does not leave us in that state. That is the good thing about God. And that is why there is hope. Yes, he punished the children of Judah because of their sin. But there was a way that he could still get them back to himself. Why am I saying so? I'm saying so because the whole duty of man is to worship God. Someone say amen. That is why in wrath, God remembers mercy. Why does God remember mercy? He remembers mercy because he desires that you may worship him. He desires that you may live according to the call that he, he called you into him. So because of that, he remembers mercy and offers forgiveness. And each one of us, we do not have to live like we, we are hopeless. What do I do about my, sit, my situation? I'm caught up in this. I've tried it, but I can't make it. I just want you to know, God offers forgiveness. And the forgiveness he offers, it is you to reach out and get that forgiveness. We can call unto him by repenting our sins, and he will be able to receive us to himself. Blessed be the name of Jesus. And that is why this hour, we will look at the plea because there was Joel's plea. There was a plea that Joel brought up when he looked at the judgment on the children of Judah. And he found out that uh, there were the things that they were facing and going through, they were so hard. And Joel had to make a plea, had to call out to the children of Judah. And he call, was calling them out so that they could turn back to God. The, the call, we still find it. If you begin where we were in chapter number one, you can look at verse number 13. If you look at verse number 13, the Bible says, Guard yourselves and lament, you priests. Wail, you who minister before, before the Lord. Consecrate a fast. Call a sacred assembly. Gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land. That is the call. That's the plea. He's calling upon the men and the women, and especially he begins with the leaders. Because when sin strikes and judgment comes upon people, I want to say everyone gets affected. It does not leave anyone behind. And that is why the plea comes to the priests, it comes to the elders, and it goes down to all the inhabitants of the land. And I want to say, Church of Jesus Christ, when sin has come in, Every person gets affected. But the plea here is so that we can find our way back to God. Because of what had befallen Judah, Joel came in and made a plea for the children of Judah to return to God. Someone say amen. The plea was because we can't remain in the state that we are in. We can't continue doing, we, we are just experiencing the things that we are experiencing. This consequence is too harsh for us. But there is a God of mercy. And because of the God of mercy, Joel calls upon men and women and tells them we can return to God. He says, return to the Lord our God. And that is the plea I want to bring to us tonight. Despite the fact that we examined our lives, and we found ourselves wanting. Because we said it is possible to be part and parcel of a church, a great church like Umoja. It is possible to be part and parcel of the team that serves in this church. But in one way or another, we are living under sin. We've hidden ourselves. And when you examined yourself, you found yourself on spot. And you didn't know what next to do. There is a plea tonight. And the plea is, let us return to God. Someone say, Amen. We can repent of our sins and return to our God. What happened in Judah? 
the judgment that happened to the children of Judah was a wake up it was a wake up call for them to arise from their slumber that is what was happening judgment had to awaken them from their spiritual slumber back to the love of God maybe what has been happening in your life has been happening and you thought you are okay but as we come to this Bible marathon this week there is a wake up call over your life that is why you've been found on spot not because anyone wants to judge you but because God is interested in your life and what God desires is that you must return to him the few of us may do things that will affect all of us but instead of doing things that will affect all of us, it is God, it's your responsibility, personal responsibility to heed to the plea that is being brought to us tonight. Someone say amen. We serve a merciful God, a God who is concerned about the children that he's, he's begotten himself. And friends, we can't continue just being what we have been despite the fact that nobody knows sometimes back you need to read the book of uh, uh, Proverbs chapter number 15 and verse number 3 the Bible says the eyes of the Lord are everywhere watching on the evil and the good that you do you know sometimes church when we do evil things we think God closes his eyes but the Bible says he watches over. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, keeping watch on the evil and the good. So God does not just get excited with the good. Even when you are doing evil, he watches and he knows it. There is a wake-up call for all of us. We don't have to wait for judgment. We've only got to say, this is the day, and we turn around. Someone say amen. You know, the church, the early church in the book of Acts, if you read Acts chapter number 5, if you read Acts chapter number 5, and you read num verse number 5, you realize when Ananias fell on the ground and died, the church was very afraid of God. You read verse number 11, when the wife Sapphira fell on the ground and died, the Bible says the reverence of God came back to the church. Friends, the reason they began to go back to the love is because they had seen the consequences of sin. I am here tonight to tell you, you don't have to wait for the consequences of sin. You've only got to turn around and say, I cannot continue in the way I am. I need restoration. My restoration cannot be stopped by the sin in my life. God loves you and he would love to pour every blessing that you need. But tonight, dear friends, don't wait for consequences. Just turn around. Blessed be the name of Jesus. If you look at chapter 2. Chapter 2 of Joel. From verse number 12. Chapter 2 of Joel from verse number 12. The Bible says, Now therefore, says the Lord, Turn unto me with all your heart, with fasting. Turn unto me. That is the word that I want you to pick on in that scripture. Turn unto me with all your hearts. When that is being spoken, it was because Joel is pleading with the people that God, if they turn unto God, God will do something. If you read verse number 13, say, so rent your hearts and note your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness. And he, he relents from doing harm. Return unto me. We may have been afraid after we talked about sin and we talked about judgment. Because we said sin attracts judgment. And maybe we've been afraid and wondering, what is it that I need to do? But tonight, the answer is, return unto me with all your hearts. 
That is the call of God upon our lives. That we can come unto him. We can repent. And when God talks about returning, we must turn to God with all our hearts. What God is saying is true repentance. He's looking for true repentance. A real turnaround. An about turn. A man or a woman who is not just coming because we've called out for an altar call. But a man or a woman that looks at himself and herself and is saying, I am lost. I need to come back to God. A man or a woman that wants to come to God in sincerity. The repentance that is true. The repentance that is real. Turning around, making an about turn from what was not pleasing unto God. And begin to do what glorifies the name of Jesus. That is what God is calling us unto. We don't have to wait for God's judgment. It may be too late. We must return to the Lord and repent of our sins. And when we return, he's merciful. He's gracious. He's kind even to forgive us. And that is the God we serve. If you read verse number 14, he says, who knows if he will turn and relent and leave a blessing behind. That is the God we serve. You may be wondering whether he will do it, but I want you to know he will do it. Only if you turn to God, not half-heartedly, not one leg in, one leg out. He wants, to, he wants us to come to him with the broken hearts, not only with the lip services, not with, with the crocodile tears. Hello? It is easy for us to look remorseful from outside. But inside we are not broken. That is why you realize men and women commit sin. Then you talk to them about sin. They repent and after they have gone, they go back to the same sin. Why? Their remorsefulness was from the outside. But God is looking for the brokenness of your heart. God is looking for something. When you come to him in repentance, you are broken. You are saying, Lord, this thing that I've been doing, it, I know it has not brought glory to you. I know I've been beating my wife and then I go to church. I know I've been beating my husband and I've been pretending we are in love. You are broken by the things that you've been doing and you come to God in brokenness. That is true repentance. And that is what God is calling us unto. He's not calling us to come just with an outward appearance of, look, of looking like the holier than thou. That is not what God is looking for. He's looking for a heart that is broken. He's looking for someone who is coming from the, from the inside. The actions that he comes with is genuine. The heart change, you know. You need a change of heart. Genuine repentance. Sincerity in brokenness. Church, there are many people that have run to, to altars. But sometimes we've done it just to, because you know th th there was an altar call. But tonight, if we've got to turn to God so that he can relent, we must go with broken hearts. We must know that sin is an abomination. Sin is a reproach to all men. And that is why God desires brokenness. Someone say amen. Blessed be the name of Jesus. You don't have to repent today and tomorrow you are in the same sin. No. And you know what, friends? Sometimes we do it and we say, you know God is merciful. He just forgives. You know, men, men are harsh. Oh, you know our pastors are very harsh. I wish they were like God. We are not God. We will tell you the truth. Blessed be the name of Jesus. We will tell you when you repent, stop sinning. Turn around. Make an about turn. Stop going to places you are going to. Dear friends, why should you carry, why should you carry task pills now in a black bag? Keep it in your, in your fridge. Unagonga, unakam, sit, unaona ukosawa. Lakini unaona tano tano. Badirika wewe. Hello? Your children are wondering, well, Daddy, to patia imagine, you know, someone here at Wazima, here I kunyuagi na watoto. 
ni dawa yangu ya tumbo repent blessed be the name of jesus are you getting me church we need restoration we need power in the body of jesus christ we need to see signs and wonders but we must turn to god blessed be the name of jesus we must return to god with brokenness like just the prophet would say that prophet joel he would say come with the fasting you know when the bible talks about fasting it is important for us to understand i know as a church we we fasted a few weeks ago 21 days of fasting and i know it was a good time maybe many of us or some of us enjoyed it but it is important for us to understand when Joel is talking about we come to God in fasting. What Joel is talking about is come with brokenness. Come in humility. He does not want you to come shouting. He does not want you to come your frown your face. We are asking what is wrong today? Imagine nimefunga. He does not say hello at hii week umekuwa uko low uko down sana eh hey, wacha hii ni punishment hello fasting is not supposed to be a punishment to anyone we must come to god with the fasting this means we must come in brokenness we must come in humility blessed be the name of the lord we humble ourselves before god so that he can hear us so that he can answer us so that he can do that which we are looking out for someone say amen we if we did it in in brokenness and humility i want you to know god heard your prayer someone say amen without it friends we are just cutting weight. You know, you may not have the, the money to go to the gym. So you say, Ye, what wanna fast? Ata mi nitafunga. Hii weight me nisumbua. Itaenda. But you did not do it unto God. Are you getting me right? You might have done it. But you never added prayer in it. You are just on hunger strike. Hello? What Joel was telling people come let us be broken before god come so that we can give ourselves in humility that god may hear us hope we gave ourselves to prayer when we were fasting because without it we were wasting our time blessed be the name of jesus our fast should not be in vain our fast should be something that makes god come to us and do unto us what we are asking of him. Someone say amen. In Isaiah 58, we read verse 6 to verse 9. Isaiah, it says, Is this not the fast that I have chosen? To lose the bonds of wickedness. To undo the heavy burdens. To let the oppressed go free. And that you break every yoke. Verse number 7. Is it not to share your bread with the hungry? And that you bring to your house the poor who are cast out. When you see the naked, that you cover them and not hide yourself from your own flesh. Then your light shall break forth like the morning. Your healing shall spring forth speedily. And your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord, the glory of the Lord shall be your rare God. Someone say amen. Someone say amen. Verse number nine. Then you shall call and the Lord will answer. You shall cry. He will say, he, and he will say, here I am. If you take away the yoke from your midst, the pointing of the finger and speaking wickedness. Someone say amen. That is the fast that God accepts. The fast that loses the bonds of wickedness. Blessed be the name of Jesus. The fast that lets the oppressed go free and it breaks every yoke. The fast that does not keep the bread until you stop fasting, then you eat it. Hello? Buena sifiwe. Yani kwa sababu, tulikuwa tu tumetoka taremoja. 
na ukajua eh hey, unajua vitu za new year bado ziko so what you decided you piled it kept it kept it in the freezer and you say when i finish fasting nitajibonda that is not what god is talking about he said you share your bread with the hungry and then you bring into your house the poor who are cast out when they you see the naked people you cover them and you don't hide yourself from your own flesh in other words you are ready because you are fasting praying you are doing good you are reaching out to people you are blessing the community you are blessing that sister that brother you are not looking at them and saying kwangu akukuji hii wiki hello i don't want visitors it is a time you could say come and they come and cook you don't tell them you came I'm fasting so you join me in fasting if they are not fasting let them eat look at your neighbor say neighbor that is the true fast are you getting me right it is not punishing others in this house no one will eat until i begin to eat joel was telling people guys we are in trouble let us come to god let us forget the things that are like a luxury to us that is what joel was saying put aside some of these luxuries give yourselves to god and let god do that which only him can do and when you do that then that, then your light shall break forth like the morning your healing shall spring forth speedily and your righteousness will go before you and the glory of god shall be your rear guard why you did the right fasting blessed be the name of jesus and with that fasting you shall call upon him and the lord will answer you know how sometimes we complain god i fasted for 21 days and you have not even answered even last year i did the same and you've not answered did you do the right fast we need to revisit ourselves and say god I'm coming to you in repentance that even when I fasted I did not do the right one. I want God you help me until I do the right thing. Joel chapter 2 and verse number 13 he says, rend your hearts and not your garments. Rending our hearts and not our garments. What Joel was talking to the children of Judah, you know the children of Israel had used to tearing their clothes and putting on sackcloth when trouble came. And when people met them with sackcloth with torn clothes they knew these ones who are really seeking God but what Joel is saying that is not what we are looking for that is not what God is looking for he's not looking for it the outward show he's looking at the heart dear friends when God looks at your heart what does he see Sometimes you know for these people it was putting on torn cloth and and sackcloth But I say to you in our time today you just need to understand God does not delight in outward in outward show offs not in burnt offerings sacrifices you know maybe in our time you sin and because you you are you feel so sorry and because you want to look like you you really dealt with it you bring a seed to the altar hello hello I mean I just to God will receive my seed. This seed in fact it is a heavy seed. He does not delight in sacrifices. God does not need your money, he needs your heart. He needs a broken heart. The money you have is the one who has given you. So you are not doing him a favor by bringing it. You can't twist God's hand either through fasting or through your giving. be broken my friend when you are broken you will stop sinning you will stop doing what messes up with our lives god delights in a broken heart and a contrite spirit that is what god delights in men that are broken men that are sorrowful for their sins men that are coming before him under heavy conviction Not when we are walking slowly with our bibles next to our hearts as if through osmosis it just shall just get into okay look at your neighbor say neighbor i hope the pastor is not talking about you you know the walk that you the holy walk with a big bible next to your heart 
And if it is not big Bible, it is smartphone. Just next to your court and you're just saying I'm in the presence. That is not what God is looking for. He's looking for brokenness. Friends, repent and turn to God. That is the word. And God will hear you. We must go back to the place of prayer. Where we shall rent our hearts and not our garments. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Where we shall repent and turn to God. That is what God is calling us for. Friends, true repentance will help you to say no to sin. Look at your neighbor, say neighbor. Look at your neighbor, don't worry. I told you we must be restored so that restoration can come. Someone say amen. Say neighbor. One more time, say neighbor. True repentance will help you to say no and walk away in boldness. Someone say amen. It is true repentance that will cause you to walk away from wildness and wickedness. You will not entertain wildness. You will not entertain wickedness. Why? You are broken before the Lord. And once you are broken before the Lord, you know you can't do things that don't glorify God. You are crying out for mercy. You don't again go and do things that cause trouble in your life. The children of Judah were being told by Joel, come, let us rent our hearts and not our garments. Calling upon true repentance so that we can be right with God. Someone say amen. When we come to God and deal with the worldliness in our lives, deal with the wickedness, the sin that easily entangles you, the one that captures you and you feel like you cannot move anymore. Friends, it is a high time. We came to God with a broken heart. And the reason you need to repent, friends, is because when you look around your life, you need to begin asking yourself, what did we really lose? Because when you know what you have lost in God, you will begin to go before him in humility, in brokenness, because you know I lost it. And friends, when we begin to think about where we are as a, as a people, we, the question we need to be asking ourselves is, why have our altars become cold? Why has the fire on the altar gone off? What happened? You know what, friends? There's a time in Israel, the presence of God had departed, and they said, Ichabod. What might have happened? When we do not repent, when we live in sin, when we entertain things that do not bring glory to God, friends, the fire on the altar goes off. The altar becomes cold. Why? As an individual, why has your Bible gathered too much dust? It can only be wiped on a Sunday as you come to a service if ever you carry it. Why? Are our prayer closets closed and locked up? The times you prayed, the times you went for cashers, the times when a, when, when a, a solemn assembly would be called, you'll be the first person. You will not be asking, what time is it beginning? What time is it ending? Then you are told from seven to four. Guy, you must ayote to tatoboa. Men and women, who have been broken by the things of God and they desire to see God in their lives, they will open up their prayer closets and go back to their knees. They will be willing to go before the Lord and call upon the name of the Lord. Dear friends, it is a high time you rose up again and began your life of prayer. Why did you stop going for Keshas? Oh, sometimes we say there is nothing more to pray for the whole night. Me, I am blessed. Keshas are for those who have issues. Hello? Are you getting me, church? God is calling you back to the place of prayer. 
Repent, children of God. Repent for your prayerlessness. Repent for causing yourself not to be found in the presence of God. Repent. God is calling upon us this evening. And his desire is that we must repent from our backsliding and return to God. We must repent from our lukewarmness. We are neither hot nor cold. This is a year of restoration. May your heart be restored back to God. May your prayer life be restored. May your reading of the Bible be restored. Friends, we are too busy making money. Money is good, but not at the expense of your life. Not at the expense of your family. You may be busy making money. Stop the praying. Stop the going into the presence of God because you think you have no issues. And yet, our marriages have issues. And yet, our children are getting lost. We need to go back to the place of prayer. Repent, dear friends. And let's turn to God. When we repent of our sins, God will come unto us and he will show mercy. Don't wait for issues so that you can come into the presence of God. My dear sister, don't be a, a stranger in the presence of God. Yani, tukikuona kwa prayer meeting, tunajua kumeharibika. We are asking, ati nani alikuja? Aki kwake ni kubaya. Uya akujangi. Look at your neighbor, say neighbor. I hope the pastor is not talking about you. Are you getting me, church? That is why verse 14 will say, who knows? Our God of mercy will turn to us and he will leave behind a blessing. He's a God of mercy. If you return to him, he will come back to you. We must call for a solemn assembly where we shall stay in the presence of God and just let God be God. Cry before him. Lay prostrate in his presence, not caring about how good we look, not caring about our dressings, but lying on the ground and calling on the name of the Lord because he is God. Friends, let us go back to God. Let us return to him because he is our God. Blessed be the name of Jesus. You know, friends, I remembered some, some years back, when I was younger than I am, still young, but younger. Are you getting me right, somebody? I remember the meetings that we could go for. And there were benches. You know those benches that we sat on, on those, in those days? There were no seats like the ones you're sitting on. And when the power of God moved, men and women would go flat by nobody touching them. Fall over those benches and no one was hurt. But we love ourselves so much. When we come to the presence and we need prayer, you must look for a catcher by one hand, one eye looking behind. Is there a catcher? Hello? When the presence of God is available, you will not care about a catcher. You will be sure. But sometimes I ask when you are looking for a catcher, who catches the catcher? We need God, my friends. And God will come back to us through repentance. Through us realizing what did we lose? Where did we lose it? Where have we entertained sin in our lives? And God will come back to us. Someone say amen. Who knows if he will turn and relent and leave a blessing with us? Friends, restoration will come when we return to God and change our lives. That is what God is looking out for. Yesterday I talked to you about David. Allow me to bring this by talking about this man, David. David, I said he was a man after God's heart, own heart. When he failed, when he failed in what he did, he came to himself at one time. After the prophet Nathan, having talked to him and having let him know what is the failures that he had come through, he looked at himself and was convicted of his sin. And when David was convicted of his sin, he pleaded for mercy. 
David did not think about him being a king. He did not think about the armies that surrounded him. He realized he had sinned against the most high God. And what David did, he pleaded for mercy. If you go together with me in the book of Psalm 51, you will find the prayer of David. Prayer of David when he had sinned and he has realized his sins and he's been com convicted to call upon the name of the Lord. David pleaded for mercy. That is why he says, can we read verse, no, verse number one together? Three, go. Blot out my transgressions. That is David pleading for mercy. It, it came upon David that despite the fact that he was a king, he had sinned against the most high God. He had done what was wrong, what was evil before the Lord. So David pleads for mercy in that first verse. He says, God, blot away my transgression. He did not go to God and begin to say, God, you know, you know this woman, if he had not, if he just covered herself, if she had just gone to a hiding place, I wouldn't have seen her. That is not what David said. People in our generation, we have excuse for every sin that we commit. I am here to let you know, if sin has been committed, go to God in repentance. Don't justify your sin. Hello? Don't justify it. Repent. Call unto God. Let God forgive you. He's more than willing to do that. If you read verse number two, up to verse number four, you will realize what David desired most was a cleansing after he acknowledged his sin. Verse number two of, 50, of uh, Psalm 51, David comes to God and he desires a cleansing. He says, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. That is David. Verse number three, for I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Friends, the sins that we commit is not that they are hidden. We know them. You know where you go to. You know what you do. You know what you've been handling. And David is saying, God, I know these sins. They are always before me. And verse number four, can we read it together? Three, go. And done this evil in your sight that you may be found just when you speak and blameless when you judge. Are you getting that, church? David knew God was the only holy God. He knew there was nothing he would do to challenge the mercies of God. He knew when God judges, he judges faithfully, justly. And that is why he says, God, you are the only one that can forgive me. In this, you need to realize David did not joke. He repented. He cried out. He wept. He mourned. Despite him being a king. Sometimes, friends, we want to portray ourselves very great men and women. Why? Because maybe you are a leader. Maybe we've seen you ushering in this church. So you do. even when we call for an altar call, you are too big to come. Maybe because we see you lead, leading us in worship. Maybe because you teach Sunday school. Maybe because there are things you get involved in. You are the one who leads the mission teams. Every mission you're there. So how do you break? If David was broken before the Lord, we can be broken before the Lord. There is no exception, my friend. Break before the Lord. Confess your sins to him. Repent and turn back to God. Don't hide your sin. When you hide it, it will expose you. Blessed is the man that will say in this year of restoration, I'm not going to hide my sin. Look at verse 7 and verse 8 of the same chapter. Verse 7 and verse 8 of the same chapter. David is still asking God for mercy. He says, purge me with his soap and I shall be clean. 
Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Verse number eight. Make me hear joy and gladness that the bones you have broken may rejoice. The judgment of God is not easy. That is why David would say the bones that you have broken. What was David saying? Lord, purify my heart. Purify my heart, Lord. Let me be as gold, as precious silver. I don't know whether you ever sang that song. The song that went, purify my heart. Let me be as gold, precious silver. Purify my heart. Let me be as gold, pure gold, refine as fire, my heart one desire is to be holy. Set apart for you, Lord. I choose to be holy. Set apart for you, my master. Ready to do your will. That is the cry of our hearts. That God may purify us. That we may be set apart to do the will of God. Friends, sin does not allow us to do the will of God. Sin keeps us away. But tonight we come and say, Lord, I want to return to you. I want you to purge me with his soap. I want you to cleanse me that I may be acceptable before you. That the restoration that is coming may find me in a position that I can receive it. That is what David was doing. He desired truth from the inward. That, that one you can read in verse number 6. That is the truth that David was looking for. He did not want to portray himself the holier than thou. A man after God's own heart. He realized as much as he was a man after God's own heart. Inwardly God had seen his sin. Verse number 6. David calls upon God. And what does David do? He says. Can we read together church? Behold you desire truth. In the inward parts. And in the hidden part. You make me know wisdom. In the inward. In the hidden parts. Friends we thank God for what we see. Outwardly. We thank God for when we look at you. And we see what you are doing. But God is interested in your heart. God is interested in the hidden parts of your life. What is it that you will do. To bring. The restoration of God upon your life. Friends, what David was looking for, he was looking for more of God and less of him. He did not want himself to be seen. He needed God. What David was saying, not me, but you, oh God. We can read together verse number 10 to verse number 13. Where David calls upon God and he says, create in me a clean heart, oh God. Can we read together three, God? Create in me. A clean heart, oh God. And renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence. And do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. And uphold me by your generous spirit. That's number 13. Then I will teach transgressors your ways. And sinners shall be converted to you. What is David saying? Lord, it's not about me. That is why many times we sing that song together. Create in me a clean heart, O God. And renew a right spirit within me. Don't we sing it together? Can we sing it one more time? Three, go. Create in me a clean 
ah, oh, oh God and renew our right spirit within repeat creating me creating me a clean ah, ah, oh, oh, oh and renew our right spirit within me the second part of it cast me not away from your presence oh god take note your holy spirit from me Restore unto me the joy of the salvation and renew our right spirit within. Would you lift up your hand and say, Created me a clean heart, O God? Say it like you believe it. Say, Created me a clean heart, O God. Renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence. Restore the joy of my salvation. Take not the Holy Spirit out of my life. Oh God, I come to you. More of you and less of me. Oh God, just give him a clap offering somebody. <laughs> Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of Jesus. That was the cry of David. And tonight, my, my dear friends, I want to say First John chapter number 1 and verse number 9 would speak to you in this season. The season that we are looking for restoration. I don't know what it may be after you examined yourself. I don't know what you may be holding on. I don't know how you live in our midst. I don't know how you relate with your people. I don't know how you relate with your family, with your friends, with your husband, with your wife, whatever happens. But my desire is what John would say in 1 John chapter number 1 and verse number 9. What does it say? Let's read together. If you confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In other words, if you repent, God is more than willing to forgive you. If you confess your sins, it doesn't matter what it is. It may be huge. You are looking around and wondering. Will I really receive mercy for this? I am here to let you know, friends, our God is a God of mercy. Our God is full of compassion. Our God is slow to anger and of great kindness. Run into the mercy hands of God and he will receive you. Repent of your sins and you shall be forgiven. That is the God we can run to tonight. That is the God that you can turn to and say, God, I need you at this hour. Someone say amen. If you will ever enjoy the year of restoration and demonstration, let repentance be a key thing in your life. If you will enjoy the mercies of God upon your life, run and fall into the hands of a merciful God. Let him deal with the sin of your life. Friends, the desire of my heart is repent and turn to God. May our hearts be broken by the things that break the heart of God. May our hearts be broken by the things that break the heart of God. May we be moved by what moves the heart of God. Sometimes uh, we've been stiff-necked. Sometimes uh, we don't want to move. 
when God is moving. But my prayer tonight, may we be a church that will be broken by the things that break the heart of God. May we be moved by the things that move God so that his mercies will be released upon our lives. Church, who are you in God? Are there things that you need to let God know about you? They are your secrets. But God says, return unto me. Return to me. That is the key word for you tonight, friends. And as you return to God, I want you to know that the mercies of God are new every morning. Sin is strong, but God's mercy and God's love are stronger. Sin may push you and you tell us, I don't know how to deal with it, but the mercies and the love of God are stronger than sin. Call upon the mercies of God. And friends, as I conclude, it is only repentance that will bring great restoration in your life. Repentance, returning to God, going back to what God called you to, going back to prayer, going back to doing the will of God, going back to serving the purposes of God. God does not delight in burnt offerings. He does not delight in sacrifices, but a broken heart and a contrite spirit he shall not despise. May you be broken by what breaks the heart of God. May you be moved by what moves the heart of God. Mm -hmm.